Hey guys. So, uh, all right. So I'm set up with my light weld. I've done a little bit of testing here just to kind of give you an idea. I'm going to try to simulate the same thing. Um, but in here is where I did a straight weld. You can see that it's concave. And here where it's flush, I did a couple different methods. Uh, this one, I kind of tried to just move continuously, but I stayed slightly hovered off the surface and let the wire kind of feed in. So essentially, I wasn't letting the wire push me back. I was kind of letting it build up as I moved along. Uh, this one, it got overheated because it's an outside corner and I have, you know, all these little windows. So it gets hot really quick. But anyways, I started with about an eighth inch gap and I moved down to where there was no gap. And this one, I went along and pause, move, pause, move, pause. Uh, so I'm about to show you that right now. So I'm set up with my normal setting for my wire feed of this material. Uh, what I have to work with right now is, I think this is about 11 gauge stainless. And then this is this is some thicker stainless, but it's just uh, the only um, bigger flat piece I can weld to at the moment that I have. So, um, but let me go through and kind of show you that. So I'll set up one like this. Um, and then I'm going to set up a um, a gap in between and I'll run through that and show you. So, all right. So what I have is I have my machine set uh, for um, roughly 80 thousandths material, even though this is a little thicker, just because I'm going to be going a little slower. So I want to have my power down a little bit from what it recommends because it Again, that, uh, that, that power setting is recommended for if you have a nice good fit up and you're just going straight. But whenever you're manipulating the torch, you're going to be going a little slower. So I'm just going a little bit, uh, less power here. I have my wire speed, uh, set to about where it's supposed to be 70 centimeters per minute at the moment. Um, again, you can play with this a little bit increased wire speed might help the wire race to the material so you don't break contact a little easier, but uh, I've gotten the hang of it with the factory wire speed. So I'm at 70 centimeters per minute on the wire speed. And I'm just gonna get right into it to show you. I also don't have the right wire on here, but for demonstration purposes, it'll work the same. This is steel wire. Let me tack this up. Then I'll tack this as a gap. And I'll leave, leave that uh, gap here and I'll get to that part second. But let me zoom in here. So I'll do the first like inch or so with just the straight line weld, just so you can see that. Uh, that's probably how you're trying to do it at the moment. So you can see this is probably what you're achieving. It's uh, not going to be flush. You can see it's it's undercut there. Now it's going to be a nice strong weld, but it's not going to give you that finish that you're looking for. So let me zoom in real close here and hopefully you can kind of see what I'm going to be doing. So instead of being pushing in, I'm going to just kind of let it push me, but like I'm going to hold light press, lighter pressure on the surface so that the gun can't push me back. You can see I'm just kind of moving along and pausing. And hopefully that uh, you can understand there that the wire is feeding in, making contact with the material still, but it's allowing me to build up. Now, another way to do that is to, uh, I'll show you here what I what happens if I just increase the wobble width. I went up 50%. So you can see there, it made it wider, but it didn't quite flush it out. Uh, and that may be good enough for what you're trying to do, but uh, typically you can either do the pause or you can also kind of go back and forth a little bit. If you want, if your gap is bigger, you're going to probably have to. 
to build up some more material. And that one didn't come out beautifully, but just to show you the gist of that. And this one with the gap, I'm gonna start by kind of building up some material on one end and then jumping over to the other. Do my best to keep this in frame for you. And as I get closer, those movements can be smaller. And you can see here, I can just do my straight line weld here. But again, if you're trying to make it nice and flush so you can finish it out afterwards, then... Um, well, let, me, let me give you a shot of that from the side. So it requires a little bit more technique, uh, but it is doable. And now if you want to add more material on there, you totally can. Uh, two different methods there, the pause and move, and the side to side. And I'll just do one more. So this one, I want a little bit more width. So I'm gonna go back up. I'm gonna go 30% increase. I don't need all the 50%.
you might have a different technique of doing this, but I think the idea is the same for the most part is you got to kind of like let the wire build up instead of letting that wire just push you flat like that. So even with that, you can see that the heat affected zone is pretty minimal. So as long as you have the power set right and you're not way overpowering it, you shouldn't be burning through. Um, but you do have to play with it, figure out your settings a little bit. And so the joint that's ideal for the laser, I'll set one like that up, is going to be how you have it, pretty much like this. And you have a slight gap on the one side, so I'll kind of try to mimic that as much as I can. All right, so hopefully that gives you an idea. Uh, run with that for now, and we'll group back together uh, tomorrow if you guys see fit. Thank you.